Here's a series that we want to rewrite in summation notation or in, in sigma notation. So we need to begin by figuring out what's our, our general formula here that we'll write to the right of sigma. So we've got to decide on the pattern, what pattern is taking place. So in this case, you're not adding a number every time, um, nor are you multiplying by the same value each time, but rather we realize that we have 2 for my first term, and then 6 is 3 times 2, let's try that again, 3 times 2, and 24 is 4 times 3 times 2, and 120 is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2, and so on. So we realize that we actually have a factorial happening here. In other words, another way of writing this, 2 is the same as 2 factorial, 6 is 3 factorial, 24 is 4 factorial, and so on. So once we realize that we have a factorial pattern happening, then we can go ahead and, and start on sigma notation. So we could say we just have n factorial, but if we're going to choose n factorial for my, my formula, then I would not be starting at n equals 1 because I want to have 2 or 2 factorial for my first term. So I would want to start with n is equal to 2. And <clears throat> therefore, the very last number that I would need to substitute in here would be 6 because the last term of the sequence is 6 factorial, which is 720. So here's one way of writing this series in sigma notation. But as always, there's more than one correct answer when you're writing a series using sigma notation. So for example, let's say I didn't want to start with 2. Let's say I wanted to start with 1 because so often we, we start with 1 instead. Well, then I would need to, instead of n factorial, I would need to go ahead and have n plus 1 factorial here and think about why. Because now, if I substitute in a 1 here, 1 plus 1 will give me 2, and I want to compute 2 factorial for my very first term of this series. So if you want to begin with an index of n is equal to 1, then we would need to use n plus 1 factorial. And of course, now we have to adjust the value that I would substitute in last. Because I wouldn't want to substitute in 6, because if I did, 6 plus 1 would give me 7 factorial, which is too large. Of course, my very last value needs to be uh, 6 factorial. So you can see, okay, that means I would actually need to substitute in a 5. 5 needs to be the very last value I substitute in that will give me my last term of this series, which would be 6 factorial, which is equivalent to 720. So here's two, uh, two ways of writing the series in sigma notation. But of course, there's additional ways. Here's another series that we want to write using sigma notation. So this is kind of an interesting one because notice how the terms alternate signs. We're starting with a positive number for my first term, positive 1, then we have a negative, and then a positive 9, and then a negative 16, and so on. So we have this alternating sign pattern. So what I recommend when you have the alternating signs, I recommend that you kind of ignore the signs at first. So let's say, let's say we ignore those signs, and we're just going to take a look at 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, and so on, and see if we can establish the pattern without worrying about the signs initially. So let's say we want, we want to go ahead and start with n is equal to 1. So this being my first term, I'm going to substitute in 1. My second term, I would be substituting in 2, and so on. My third term, I'm substituting in 3. So hopefully you realize that these particular terms are all perfect squares. In other words, we need to take the n value, whatever it is, and square it, and you'll have that term. And so that being said, then to get that last term of 36, I would need to substitute in a 6. 6 squared would give me 36. So this is a good place to start. This would at least give me my values 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, and 36. Now we need to go in and figure out how I can take care of the alternating signs. How can we ensure that the first term is positive, the second is negative, the third is positive, fourth is negative, and so on.
Well, the only way to alternate a sign like that is if we were to have a power of negative 1. So in other words, we need to multiply by negative 1 raised to a power. Now, first let's talk about why, why do we actually need a power? Why couldn't we just multiply by negative 1? Well, if you were multiplying by negative 1, that's going to cause every term in your sequence to be negative. In other words, if I plug in 1, that would give me negative 1 for my first term. If I plug in 2, that's going to give me negative 4 for my second. Plugging in 3 would get me negative 9. You see how every single term is going to be negative if we just multiply by a negative 1. So to create the alternating signs, then we have to have negative 1 raised to a power. So a good place to start is let's just raise negative 1 to the power of n. And let's see what happens. So if you were to substitute 1 in for n, we'll have 1 squared, which is 1, times negative 1 to the first power. So that would give me negative 1 for my first term. I would have a negative first term. Now let's just go ahead, for example here, and continue on and see what would happen then for the next term if you were to plug in 2. Substituting in a 2, we'd have 2 squared times negative 1 to the second power. So now see that the exponent is even here. That's going to end up giving me a positive 4 for my second term. So by choosing an exponent of n, I'm going to end up with a sign pattern of negative for my, my first term, positive for my second, negative for my third, and so on. I am going to get the alternating signs, but I'm getting them in the wrong order. I don't want to start with a negative number. I want to start with a positive number. So then to fix this, you actually have a couple of options. We could say, well, then I'm going to raise it to the n plus 1 power. Let's see what happens. Now if we substitute in 1, 1 squared times negative 1 raised to the 1 plus 1 power. See, now we have 1 times negative 1 squared, we've created that even exponent that's going to result in an overall positive number in the end. So this would be one way to create the alternating sign pattern, and this would ensure that we start with a positive number. But as I've mentioned before, you always have several ways of, of doing this, actually an infinite number of ways of writing it in sigma notation. So another way, if you still wanted to start with 1 and end with 6, you could also have chosen n squared times negative 1, and instead of the n plus 1, you could have raised it to the n minus 1 power. Think about for a second why that would work as well. If you substituted 1, we'll have 1 squared times negative 1 raised to the 1 minus 1 power. So you'll notice here 1 minus 1 is 0, and anything raised to the 0 power is going to result in 1. So n minus 1 would work as well, and that would give us a positive first term in the sequence. But in general, when you have this alternating sign pattern, you can always safely start with negative 1 to a power, and then just think about adjusting what that exponent is. And that can help you figure out whether the first term should end up being positive or my first term is negative.